Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another behind the scenes unboxing video. These have kind of become my favorite videos to make because we get to just chat. You get a sneak peek of what's coming up on the channel. And this week, Sweetwaters hooked us up with some unbelievable gear, including a guitar for you guys and a guitar that I never thought I'd actually ever be able to try in person. So smack a like on the video if you're going to enjoy it. That actually really helps out with the wacky and wild YouTube algorithm. Let's see what we've got to unbox today. All right, so the FedEx guy just dropped these off. Time to unbox some guitars. Oh wait, <laughs> maybe not. Caution, read this before opening. We realize you really want to open this box and start playing your new instrument. It's like they know me. But we strongly recommend that you wait 24 hours before doing so. Sudden and drastic changes in temperature or climate can potentially damage the clear coat, finished paint, or even the wood itself. Waiting 24 hours before opening this box will allow the instrument to slowly adjust your home slash facility temperature. We know it's hard to wait, but please trust us on this one. Really? Is that a thing? I have never done that. I like this one though. If it's what I think it is in these boxes, the sticker is correct. These guitars are hot. Usually I'm beholden to no sticker, but in this case, I really don't want to fuck up these guitars. So, um, shit. I guess I'll see you guys in 24 hours then. One eternity later. All right, we're back. First box, I'm not waiting anymore. Let's see what's inside. Ah, uh, nice, very tricky, a box within a box. Oh look, it's YouTube's favorite brand that no one ever has anything bad to talk about. Right, Pringle? Good girl. Nah, but wait until you guys see what's inside though. Let's open up this box within the box. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Look at this, man. This is ridiculous. So obviously this is a Les Paul custom, but look at that. What is that? Is that a little bit of ambered logo? Is that a little bit of finish checking? A little bit of aging on the gold hardware? The answer to all those questions is yes. This is no ordinary Gibson Les Paul. Speaking of yes though, it seems that 11,553% of viewers have not said yes to the subscribe button. <laughs> Outrageous. Do me a favor, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit subscribe. It actually really helps out the channel. What we have here from Sweetwater today is the current pinnacle of what you can get from Gibson. Custom Shop 1968 reissue, lightly aged by the Murphy Lab. As far as Gibson goes, this is as premium as it gets. Now, compared to Gibson USA, which are the production level guitars, the Gibson Custom Shop does it all in the old ways. I'll have to do some research because I'm not exactly sure how traditional they go, like whether they use hide glue or not. I'm pretty sure they do for the purists. Oh my God, the smell is really strong. It's kind of funny. It looks like an old guitar. It's got the, like the light aging and everything, but it's very much got that new guitar smell. Now it looks very similar to a regular Les Paul Custom. And obviously it shares a lot of the same specs, the mahogany body, mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, mother of pearl inlays. But there's a reason I wanted this one in particular. Firstly, in general, I just love the Les Paul Custom. And I've got my two Norlin era Restamod Customs, which I absolutely love. And I've upgraded those guitars to within an inch of their life. I mean, they've got Fishman Fluence, Bare Knuckle, Locking Tuners, extra Jumbo Stainless Steel Frets. I was missing a traditional all stock Gibson Les Paul Custom, but I didn't want to get just any random one. If you've watched my channel before, you probably know I love aged guitars, not because of how they look, although I do really like the look, but that's a separate thing. Really, it's the feel. One of my favorite things about my 72 Les Paul Custom is a lot of the finish has been rubbed off. It's less sticky. It feels super quick. There's literally less in between your hand and the wood, so you feel more connected to the instrument. Fingerboard edges are more rounded compared to a new guitar. I mean, overall, it just feels like a much more comfortable playing experience than a new guitar does. So I knew I wanted one from the Murphy Lab and the Gibson Custom Shop has two current reissues of the Les Paul Custom, the 57 and the 68. And the 68 is closer to what I like. It's got the carved maple cap instead of an all mahogany body. And the headstock angle is a shallower 14 degrees instead of the normal 17 degrees. So there's less string tension. Also, there's been so much hype around the Murphy Lab. I had to see how the Murphy Lab stacked up compared to some of my other aged single cuts and even to my real vintage guitars. Like for the amount of money they're asking for, how close are they really getting to the authentic 
thing. And so far, so good. It looks like it will need to hydrate this fingerboard a little bit. Oh, I love those fingerboard edges. Feels very smooth. And then the fret nibs, that's one of my favorite things about Gibson guitars. Most people think they're decorative, but it was actually to help with uh, better rounded fret ends back before technology had evolved to do the rounded ball ends that like ESP does. The Murphy Lab does different levels of aging. This is their ultra light aged. And what they've said is this is basically an old guitar that's been mostly kept in the case. It's not really been played or gigged out too much, but it's starting to show its age a little bit with the yellowing and a little bit of finish checking. And it's kind of funny. They've done the same thing that Heritage did where they've done a great job with the checking, great job with lightly aging the hardware. They've made sure the color are right i mean they've done a great job with aging the guitar but like the plastics look brand new the pick guard these pickup rings they look brand new interestingly they have faded the poker chip like the letters are starting to fade a bit but nothing else the control knobs look brand new the truss rod cover the truss rod cover screws the nut the inlays i mean it all looks brand new i think so far i've only seen my buck really be consistent with the aging when it comes to single cuts. It's such a small thing. Overall, the guitar's vibe is definitely a vintage guitar. But if I'm giving a little bit of feedback, those are the small, small things that could be improved. Moving on to the back, clues on waffle tuners, stamp serial, interesting, no made in the USA stamp. I guess that's something they hadn't started doing yet in 1968, because it's stamped on my 72. Oh, and that's cool celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Les Paul. Very, very, very cool. And there you can see the checking a little better on the back. It's very difficult to pick up with this iPhone, but the checking is over the entire guitar. And then again, man, this is what I'm saying with the neck. It still hasn't shined, so it hasn't had as much finish rubbed off yet as I prefer, but still compared to a new one, feels very smooth very quick. I love this plush, by the way. It's like they've shaved, uh, who's the Philly mascot? Gritty. And used his wool to line the interior of this case. All right, so we've got the case keys, checklist, warranty card, even the strings are vintage reissue, apparently. About Murphy Lab. Murphy Lab instruments use lacquer redeveloped from the original 1950s formula for a truly vintage look and feel. And then I love how the instruction manual is also vintage correct. You know, like it explains what the tunematic bridge does. All the figures for the explanations are hand drawn. And then of course, a certificate of authenticity or even the booklet has finished checking. It's not real, but it does look cool. Oh, you've also got the regular control cavity cover just in case. Fuck man, like I can't believe this is my guitar. Massive, massive thanks to Sweetwater for setting this up. I mean, obviously now I owe them a shitload of content. Well, it's a guitar that I did not think I would ever own and certainly not one I could afford with an infant. So feeling kind of emotional right now. Kringle is very much less impressed. One last little flyover of this absolute work of art. But uh, yeah, that's my new guitar. Fuck <laughs> man, it's so cool. And uh, you guys watching the content are the whole reason that uh, Sweetwater was willing to do this with me. So uh, yeah, just thank you guys for sticking around. I'm just rambling now. Let's see what else we have to unbox. Later. <laughs>
should have known. It's a care package from friends of the channel and today's sponsor, Ridge. And Ridge isn't just a sponsor, I've been using them for a couple of years now and I absolutely love it. There's no way I'm going back. I love the sleek modern form factor that can fit into your front pocket. The durable plates made of aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber or RFID blocking and each wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. You guys know, you've used traditional wallets. They get bulky with unused loyalty cards, old receipts, and that's just not practical for modern people and it doesn't happen with Ridge. They have over 30 colors and styles to choose from for yourself, and speaking from experience, they make fantastic birthday gifts for your hard to shop for friends. This time they sent me three of the most popular designs to check out, raw forged carbon, burnt Damascus steel, and the most over the top premium design, 24 karat gold, amazing. You can even now replace the cash strap on the back with an air tag holder, so you'll never lose that wallet again. They have over 50,000 five star reviews, so if you wanna see why so many people are switching over to the Ridge wallet and love it, heading over to ridge.com slash agufish. And for you guys, if you use my code agufish, you'll get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping. Link will also be in the description. And of course, clicking help support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're checking Ridge out, let's see what else we have to unbox. Next box. Dude, this box is literally massive. It's like nearly door sized. I like how it's got double hot sticker on here. If it's what I think it is, those stickers do not lie. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Well, that was an obnoxiously large box for what's turned out to be quite a normal sized guitar box. Actually, it might be a little larger than normal. Let's see what's inside. Damn. Okay, guys, check this out. Now, you guys have been saying for a long time I need to check out a D'Angelico guitar. We've checked out a ton of guitars on the channel together. Never a D'Angelico, and I've never even played one, actually. Which is some sacrilege, because they make some classy-looking sh**. I mean, look at this Art Deco-style headstock, man. I recently stayed at the New Yorker Hotel in New York City, and this is giving me very similar vibes. So I talked to Sweetwater, we decided it was finally time to answer the D'Angelico call. And the reason we decided on this one in particular, and I don't know if it's coming out on camera, like I don't know if the sense of scale is coming through, but this is a long boy. This D'Angelico is a 26 and three quarter inch scale length baritone. And you guys know I love a good classic styled baritone guitar. 26 and three quarter inch scale length is kind of a random number. It's not nearly as noticeable as 28 inches or fucking 30 inches at a glance. But if you look at things like distance between the pickups or the distance between the first and fifth fret, you can tell this is a baritone. And this fingerboard is fucking cool too. Uh, again, it might need some hydration, but I'm loving these inlays. It's got abalone stripes, and I believe from the color that these are real mother of pearl, not plastic pearloid. And this triple ply fingerboard binding is insane. These are cool too, wooden control knobs. And the indicators, oh, this would have looked really cool with gold, but again, with the Art Deco vibe. I'm really liking how it comes with a form-fitted hard case too. Sometimes with these non-standard guitar shapes, it's hard to find a form-fitted case. And especially since it's a non-standard scale length baritone, it's really nice that they've included a hard case. You don't have to go searching for one. I can't get over this truss red cover. If the rest of the guitar didn't commit to this theme, this would be upsettingly gaudy. But context is everything, and it's cool in a ridiculous way. So over the top. Okay, so this is made in Korea. I love this. It's such an old school looking guitar. Even though the headstock screams roaring 20s, they haven't been afraid to add some modern convenience upgrades like these Grover locking tuners, like this satin neck, and like this set through neck joint. I'm a total sucker for this combination. Modern features, but with classic looks, like these tuning keys, or like this tortoise shell control cavity cover. Fuck yeah, dude, this is sick. Or should I say sweet? All right, that's the guitar. What kind of case candy do we have? Eh, pretty much nothing. We got the tags, got the warranty card, a nice sticker, strap locks, and the case keys. Oh, and of course the switch tip. These companies have learned, 
pay shipping with the switch tip on sometimes ends in disaster. So that's all cool. And I've noticed a lot more companies are starting to do this. They're starting to put small post to pneumatics. There's no real functional difference. Just historically, you only find the small posts on the USA or Japan models. So the specs on the imports are just coming closer and closer to the originals. It's a really dope guitar. You want to hear something even more dope though? So Sweetwater have sent this over for me to do the demo. And once the demo is done, one of you will be the new owner of this baritone D'Angelico guitar. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda jealous. Why did I agree to this? No, I just, I'm actually stoked that we get to give this away to one of you. Cause I can already tell it's a lot of fun and someone is gonna have an absolute blast playing music with it. So of course, make sure you're subscribed so you've got notifications turned on that way you don't miss the demo and you don't miss your chance of winning this thing. So freaking cool. And that will do it for this behind the scenes unboxing video. Absolutely unreal guitars, both of them. Obviously the Murphy Lab, as a fan of Les Pauls, it's almost surreal that there's one here. And then the D'Angelico Baritone is such a cool concept for a guitar. Low notes and heavy chugs coming from a guitar that looks like that. And as part of a giveaway, it's gonna be super fun. Massive shout out to the awesome patrons that make this and all the other content possible. If you wanna support the channel as well, get bonus extras, link in the description. You can also join as a channel member or grab yourself some merch that actually really helps out. Social media, affiliate, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.